say here we are again boom 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 so yes um really excited about tonight's live um we're continuing on with like our wholesale month so hope you guys are getting values from some of the stuff we're doing um you can see we've gone live so it'd be great if just like this myself so if you guys could hit the like button hit the love button hit the crying button whatever you want to do so just help send this out to the rest of the group that would be awesome i've got three people four people watching now so that's great so and um, there's a few people who wanted a reminder of this live and a, a link to this live as well so we'll start sharing this link out as well so to here how you going to hear 10 lloyd jones points for the first comment good person yourself cheers to here so yes um amen yes sir good evening good evening how are you how is life i'm good i'm good i'll just share for those that are watching or maybe I should wait a minute because i want everybody to know about my new invest i have two new investments actually one you know literally speaks for itself well it amplifies me and um, i've invested in some proper audio equipment and bought myself a very nice boom microphone i have no idea how to work the settings of it yet so god knows what it sounds like in a very echoey empty room and the second one is i have bought myself a substantial investment of a set of scales that cost um just shy of 300 quid because I, Amazon, and I have had a irreconcilable differences in our opinions on the weights of boxes that have been shipped to Amazon of late. They seem to reckon that um, I should stick to the, you know, the noted limits. And I'm more of the opinion, if I can lift it, I'll shift it. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone not in Ireland, shift um, has another meaning. Um, <laughs> that's, that's something else. Um, yeah. So um, I've been I've been cautioned. Apparently, my shipping input level is at critical, and I'm like, but it's been that way for over a year. So I was like, right, I have um, extracted too much of late, and I will quieten down and behave myself. So I have now. Invested in a lovely set of scales, which I could have got ones at 50 quid, but they weren't the nice ones. So I put 300 quid into them. And let's be honest, I mean, that's not how you roll, is it? If, yeah, you've got two options, you'll go for the, the M&S option. You mean I'll go for the option, which I can kind of claim back in expenses at the end of the year to try and offset a massive tax bill? Yes. Yes. Okay. I would rather have my lovely big scales than um, fund. Yeah, I don't mind paying taxes. I fully agree with the concept of it. I just question how they're delivered. Well, we've only got an hour, so we'll, we'll not get. Um, we'll not get into the folks on the hill. Not the folks on the hill, or no, or anyone else. What about us and lemons? Us and us and lemons. So I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'm going to cut across here. I tell you, Theoprofetus last week at the Autumn Fair, he had no issue at all about stating that he was baffled on a daily basis about how many idiots they could get in one House of Commons. He, he led lumps out of them. Yeah, he, he was not amused. He doesn't post punches at all, so he doesn't. No. He really doesn't. Though then again, he was literally saying, and I told the Chancellor, and I'm like, I'm not at that level just yet. Chancellor doesn't phone me and go here, man. What do you reckon about this policy? Not just yet. Yeah, it was just awesome. Yet. That for the fair last week was awesome. It was good. Um, yeah, I tell you what, I, I I said to my VAs last week there was an item that we had got once off OA item and it sold like hotcakes i mean it banged out the over about 20 or 30 small item but they didn't come into small and light because they were expensive and i said they went really well see so can you find me another supplier and they're like can't be got no margins and i'm like okay cool 
Um, so I contacted the manufacturer and the manufacturer is listening. We've got enough presence um, on the Amazon platform. Thanks for your interest, but kindly look elsewhere. And I was like, great. Can you tell me where? And he was like, well, here's one or two of our suppliers and distributors, but have a look at a couple other ones. I forward that on to one VA and I was, hey, can you have a look at this? Got a phone call on Monday from a wholesaler and they're like, hello, Mr. McAfee, you recently opened an account. And I'm like, uh-huh. And they're like, yep, account's all now set up and we're through terms and conditions and we'll send you over all the Excel files. Great. And you know, your 30 days credit. And I'm like, cool. Um, VA head went, opened an account, got it all set up. I logged onto a computer last night for about the first time at nine o'clock. They had created an order and I checked. One is an item that's selling about a dozen times a month. Cost price including that is 120 quid, currently selling for 260 on Amazon with two nice. other sellers. And I'm like, that is champion. Nice. And I was like, that is beautiful. It wasn't the item I was looking for. It was far, far more expensive, a lot more margin. Nine to a dozen units a month, not the fastest selling, but at those sort of margins, I'm like, we'll take that. And plus, like, over the next, well, I don't know, I, I'm sure B4 will only have a positive impact on that. Not on that item. It won't be affected in any way at all by seasonal. That one won't at all. There'll be no uplift on that in seasonal. Um, but yeah, even still. Da -da -da -da. Interesting. Oh. Evening. I We can't see who's posting these questions, but I know... Um, the chap that was touching tips there is our is our very own Liam Siri. So nice to see you, Liam. Um, I think what we'll do, I mean, Eamon put a post up yesterday and, you know, Eamon's quite, you know, unassuming and, you know, he's very humble. So it'd be good to get um, a little bit of a behind the scenes, a little bit more detail on the post that you put up yesterday, Eamon. So, yeah, I think um, it's quite interesting to see. Um, there's a lot of interest in that post, and um, it's yeah, it's it's literally a year, nearly a year to the day where I said you'd never throw four days, test. four days. It was the nineteenth, wasn't it? Four days, nineteenth. Yeah. So I still have your zero percent alcohol prony in the fridge. It's waiting for you. It's been on ice for a year. I'm not even joking. I'll call, I'll, I'll call down soon. I'll call down soon. Um, but yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about how you started, what got you into wholesale, and that sort of things? Or whatever you like. Um, yeah. So I have been selling on Amazon since August 17, um, which was when I made my biggest mistake to date on Amazon, which was setting up a limited company before I even set up a seller's account. Cause I thought, you know, that made me top dog cause I wanted to be legitimate. And it always comes back to the mindset for me. And I've always thought mindset and that sort of stuff, just wishy-washy nonsense. For, and I think it's more since I got involved with iGen and especially since talking to you and Ashley, that I've become a lot more clued in and woke and I've always had this notion that a business is, you know, you have to have employees, you have to have moving parts and stuff going on. Like, so the notion of drop shipping to me, I'm going to be very confronta or confrontational here and say that I don't see it as a real business because you don't really do anything. You move numbers on a screen and although the numbers in the bank account are very real, it's not tangible to me. Whereas I love prep because that's real, you're taking a physical product, you're putting in the box and you're putting in the back of a lorry. And while there might be a heck of a lot more money to be made in drop shipping or NFTs or, you know, uh, putting shorts on the stock exchange, you know, I like the actual old school style of it. So I set up the limited company, started off doing RA. We still remember Richard the guy that helped me get into Amazon, me standing in Tesco's in Cookstown, looking at Despicable Me DVDs that had 70p profit on them. And I was like, 70p profit? And he's like, yeah, but there's VAT on top of it and there's shipping fees. 
I've looked at, there's no money in that, put it down, move on. I'm like, but I've been here two hours, it's all I found. And he's like, tough, move on. So moved on into OA then, and then Clever Deck over here thought he'd be smart and buy a box of Gun 3 because they were working at about £2 a unit and they were selling for 14 on Amazon. Wasn't that registered, and I thought I was class. Until I ruffled too many feathers and somebody reported it as being inauthentic, and Amazon was like, Here, I mean, just, just throw over an invoice there and we'll get this all tidied up. That cost me three months of trading from the 9th of September to the 23rd of December. So, Q4. Um, and 500 quid to get my account reinstated. And if I'd have known that would have worked, I would have paid it day one. And after that, after being burnt so much, missing an entire Q4, having the stress and hassle of trying to fight with Amazon when your account's spending it there asking for paperwork that you can't provide. I have like stuff that I want to go down a road that's safer. So I started looking at wholesale. And with wholesale, you have full traceability right the whole way through from point of sales to the customer right back to the manufacturer. And I have had um, pink stuff on Star Brands, the manufacturer. I had somebody try and claim that it was their product and I was able to move it back up the line right to the manufacturer and the manufacturer was like, here's a letter, tell them to wind their neck in. Because the wholesalers know where I sell. I will have wholesalers phone me up and go, here, listen, Eamon, this is selling really well. We've a pallet of it left. We'll cut you a deal to get it out of the warehouse. You can bang it out the door and it's like, yes, sir. Um, a lot of people will speak about when they're at the NEC or stuff like that there, when you're speaking to wholesalers, what do you tell them? And you can tell them you've got your own website and you can tell them you've got all that. I tell them straight up, listen, yes, I do have a website. It's lip service. Yes, I do sell on other platforms, but over 99% of my trade goes through the Amazon platform. It's what I do. I will agree to your terms of service if I can, if I can. Um, but that's what I do. And some of them take issue with it and say, like, no, we have exclusive relationships, and that's fine. Cut your losses and move on. But I'd still much rather do that there than to I still do away. I have it much all made up. Um, but wholesale's fun. Wholesale's where you're sitting going, shut up by that, and you're like, right, I'll take a pallet. And it's the exact same as buying something away, but instead of buying a dozen units, you're buying a thousand. You don't have to buy a pallet, but I like to be cocky at times. On occasion, that it's burnt me, but hi, Luca. Um, Claire has put out my better half loves prep as well. He puts on a podcast, We Candle, and he's golden. P.S. Love and do. Thank you. Um, combed it myself with this comb. Um, yeah, Claire, I absolutely love prep. It, as I said in the post yesterday, it's one of the things that I've struggled with. Like today, you guys are today, still train them up. Between me doing a couple of calls today, on phone, doing emails, different things. Um, I had tradesmen in the house today. We still managed to bang out, I think, 850 units today, and that was slow. Anything less than 1,000 units in a day for me, I'm like, what happened? Which is means that, you know, if you have somebody full time and they're doing that, five thousand units a week, twenty thousand a month. I'm not doing twenty thousand. I'm only doing maybe anywhere from seven to ten thousand units, and um, so it's hard to keep that balance. But Claire, you're stressing me out when you say your whole press in the shed with a naked flame. That is a fire risk. Please don't do it. Rise up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my shed's my baby. There's no naked flames and no cups of tea. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite the sight, Jonathan. Bare-chested in the candlelight and uh, prepping. Yeah. I, I would pay to see that live. Claire, do you think we can get... I'd get a quick um, for an hour of... Is it Poldark? He's a bit of a Poldark character, isn't he? Oh, Jonathan. Hi, Dave. Good to see you on. Um, how are you able to prep so much? Herminder... I, uh, I'm going to actually bring Al um, Donal into this because a good friend of ours. First time I actually spoke to him, he had put a message in a group chat. He was prepping books and he was saying it was taking far too long. 
And I phoned him and I asked him how he was doing it. And it stressed me a wee bit because it was just so inefficient. I know my system is by no means as efficient yet because we have to work in a new shape and then back again. And that bugs me, but the shed isn't long enough or the process isn't long enough to be able to do it in one straight line. But it's all about efficiency. The less times you have to move something, the better. So if I'm buying something wholesale and it's coming in cases of eight or 10 or 12, I have big tables. I will put them out on the table. So say it's a detergent and you're putting in 200 units. So you'll make your order. You say 200 of that, 300 or something else. Spread them all out on the table, barcodes face up. A dynamo printer, I'll print out 200 labels of one, 300 of the other. Bang, bang, bang. Roll them over and just label on, label on, label on. Push it off your thumb. Come back with the ball of your fist and smooth them all on. And then while you're doing that, another person can be making up the boxes. Because most of this stuff is replenishables, I can tell you that off the top of my head how many will go in which size of box and what the weight will be. My weight might be wrong. Um, and that's where it goes. So I know those detergents, some of them might get 32 to a box, other ones it's 24. And I, I make them in multiple, so I have full boxes left over. Straight in, labeled up, boxed into the box, tape along the box, and then I bring it over to a strap machine where I strap them. Um, Amazon have pointed out that it is against their terms of service to strap the box. And I've replied to Amazon and I said, since I have started strapping the box, the rate of distributor damage and the rate of warehouse damage has fallen significantly until you can guarantee that um, that will remain if I stop strapping them, I'm going to keep strapping my boxes. And they just sort of replied, well, we've advised you as much as I right, fair enough. And that was a year ago and I haven't had any fallback since. Um, and then build them onto a pallet, wrap the pallet with cling film and out the door. I should point out, I'll, I regularly put up photographs of me having boxes and pallets and people think, oh, I've had people message me go, hey, I can get your pallet shipping cheaper. Can't. Because every time people are telling me that they're forgetting that there's a little body of water between me and every Amazon fulfillment center. So it still works out considerably cheaper to put it into small box, but I only put it onto a pallet because then it's more efficient to load it onto a lorry. Today, it only 16 boxes out the door. Um, Monday, there was 32. I'd rather drop them onto two pallets than handball 32 boxes into the back of a lorry. It's also then easier for the lorry driver because it's quicker for him because he doesn't have to carry them. And then they're less likely to get damaged on the way to the supply chain. So I, I sit and I only think about every aspect, what I can do to protect the stock and what I can do to make it quicker at every aspect. And I know I'm not there yet, but that's what I have so far. Um, yeah, I mean, you're certainly making um, a lot of progress. And I mean, I'll share a photo of the shed. Well, I'll share a link to the shed that you put up. Um, we are going to be offering some support as well. So we'll talk about that towards the end of the live. Um, basically, we've had a lot of people kind of say, how do you get started? And, what about this? I'm not too sure about this. So we're actually putting something together at the moment. It is going to be very limited. It's literally going to be for a handful of people. And there's not strict criteria, but it's going to be people with the right fit. So we'll talk about what that looks like towards the end of the live. Um, I've had a few, I've done some videos recently. I mean, I would call my business a hybrid model where I'm doing OA and wholesale. So it's a great way to kind of, I don't know, what would you say, I Eamon? Mean, it's kind of a good way to kind of diversify and just kind of smooth out the dips, if that makes sense. Um, no, it's horses for courses. Like there's items that I can buy OA that I just simply cannot get wholesale. Um, there's items I bought OA and then find a wholesale supplier or I would have never in my wildest dreams considered sourcing them via wholesale. So a lot of my best products I've maybe sourced once or twice via RA or wholesale or RA or OA and then managed to find a supplier at a better price. Um, I will I will acknowledge Sean Paul Gilbert is very much keen on putting in his stories that he can get items cheaper 
from Tesco, Zucato, Sainsbury's, wherever, then he can't get wholesale and it, you know, it frustrates him. But the reason for that is is that those the well, big they're lost they're lost leaders really aren't they? So no, they're, not they're, even they're well, well, there will well, be some, some, leaders. Some, some of them will be lost leaders, yes, without doubt. Easter eggs, I've had explained to me as I've been escorted from Asda, are lost leaders. Um, but for the most part, um, like I was on to on recently to Medelza. Medelza owned Capri's, and I was asking for a specific brand that I was told was only, what did they call it? The special term, I can't remember the term now, but they literally were saying it is only for the big chains, Tesco, Sainsbury's, and the likes. And they had a exclusive agreements. But they were also doing them in big volume. I spoke with Procter and Gamble two years ago at the Spring Fire, three years ago. And I was like, Nappies, let's talk. And they're like, certainly. And they're like, we can do them for eleven fifty a pack. And I was like, they're, they're nine quid in, in Asda. And he's like, oh, would you, would you, or Tesco? Like, oh, would you like Tesco's prices? I'm like, yes, please. He's like, great. Can you put in an order for 150 million? I'm like, um. And he goes, well, then you don't get their prices. That's that's why they get those sort of prices. So, even going through to big wholesalers and distributors, you're not going to get those prices. Some people think that wholesale just guarantees the cheapest prices. It doesn't. Not at all. But the relationships you can build up there can guarantee other things. Like, um, there's an item, I don't want to say what it is because I've just ordered a whole lot of them, but there's a chocolate item that is a uh, popular this time of year that you can get in a lot of the big uh, stores for a pound. The cheapest I can get it in any wholesaler, and I've now checked four different ones, is £1.10 plus fat, which puts your cost price to one thirty two. That is a 32% price difference between there and retail. But I will still sometimes buy wholesale, even though it is not cheaper, for a couple of reasons. A, convenience. Delivered right to the warehouse door on a pallet so that it's not damaged. And if it is damaged, you go, hey, I don't want that. And they give you a credit note. Great. Um, traceability and a common case packed. It just makes it so much easier. Like, if I was going to buy 200 bottles of detergent out of Tesco's, you have to imagine at least three or four are going to get damaged in the back of a car or van. You have to damage that someone are going to get scuffed at the time of going and doing all that. There's a couple of issues there. So it's all about economies of scale. And I spoke to a friend of mine who his, his ex name is now Morgan. Anybody from Northern Ireland or anybody that pays attention within the haulage industry will see the lorries in the road, Morgan McLernan, I think they're near 200 lorries in the road. And I was talking to him about a couple of things, and he's like, lad, if you're not bent by the lorry load, why bother? And I'm like, well, I don't have that deep of pot pockets, and some things just don't sell in that volume. And he goes, well, make it work, crush your margins, and get it shifted. He says, that's where you make the money. And like he said, going, I'm currently bringing in lorry loads of uh, Muller yogurts. And he goes, we're only making a penny or two in each yogurt, but we're bringing in 33 pallets a day. But so it's it's all about the economy of scales and stuff like that. Um, sorry. If you do 26 a month would be cheaper. I don't get that. Um, yeah, I do know that a couple of people last night had messaged um, asking for tips on wholesale. So now would be a great opportunity. So I don't have to repeat myself so often. If anybody else there has any other questions. Yeah, I think like um, the few videos that I put out, I think the thing that I focused on is really need to three main things is really you need to pick up the phone and speak to people and build that relationship and kind of the the real benefit when you do that is you can get your wholesaler to work for you because you have that relationship it's not like Argos or order from Tesco's so I had um yeah made a real real good turn on um desk fans recently where uh, basically a retailer let down my supplier 
for three pallets of desk fans that I'd already ordered. Well, I ordered after they had ordered, so I got like I think it was two layers. So a phone call Monday afternoon and um, do you want three pallets of these? And it's like, yes, please. So I had them delivered to the warehouse. Very easy to prep because they're quite big and light. Yeah. Uh, basically turn the open the box, turn it upside down, the barcodes are point, pointing up, slap labels on, push them together, back in the box. And yeah, um, awesome. 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 You, really? you, you okay there? Yeah, yeah. Um do you know we talk about the efficiency thing? You would crack me up. So you open the box, you tip them out, you label them, you tip them back in. Why not open the box upside down, label them in the box, and close the flaps back up, and never take them out of the box? Because there was um, two layers in each box. Uh, yeah. I will allow you on this occasion. Yeah. No. Um. But yeah, I would have. Yeah. There's loads of things you can do like that. Um, yeah. It's also really, really handy. So young Claire is asking there, do some hoop sellers have limits on who they will allow to sell it on Amazon? Yes, Claire. Um, I recently spoke to a supplier and down said hello and he goes, what do you do? And I goes, I'm an online retailer on the Amazon platform. And he put his hands in his face and goes, not a bloody another one. And I was like, have you had a few? And he's like, yeah. And I sat and I spoke to him. I'm not going to the whole details of the story. It'll take 20 minutes, but I was actually successful there. But some suppliers, depending on the wholesalers, they might have an agreement with one or two sellers. It might also be the case that the brands that they will represent or distribute have said, we have a presence on that marketplace and we don't want anybody else on it because it can uh, affect the pricing and the perceived value of the brand. Case in point, I had spoke to a local wholesaler in Armagh who was giving me access to cat kits and stock and advent calendars and gift sets from last, the previous season. And he says, I'm not allowed to sell you this season's, but I'll sell you last season's. It's still selling very well. And there's no issue with you doing that. The brand's happy enough. I place a sizable order. Two days later, he phoned me back and goes, Eamon, I can't sell you that stock and I can never sell you anything ever. I was like, steady on, Jarlath, what to do? And he's like, you have done nothing. But he says, I have had an absolute morning from hell. Somebody in the south of Ireland had bought a whole load job lot and was banging them out on Amazon and eBay at dirt cheap. The brand had got wind of it. They had lost a rag going, this is devaluing our stock. You've got a 40 pound, am 40 pound item being sold at 23 quid. We're not happy about this because now people are have a lower perceived value of that item. And that's it, no more third party sellers at all. And the supplier said to me, Eamon, they're worth a quarter of a million to us a year. We, we can't argue with them. Sorry. I'm still a good friend. I've done business with him since, but not for Kev Kitson because he said, if we lose that account, it's worth a quarter of a million. So other sellers don't seem to comprehend that there's supply chains. There is people's jobs in the line and there is bigger issues at play than a quick win and a two pound profit on an item once off. Whereas if you play the game, stick to the margins, it might be smaller, but then it's replenishable. It's evergreen. Like I was on a call last night and I pointed out that one of my best selling items, you could go onto my storefront and you'll never pick it out. There's absolutely nothing special about it, but it is a consumerable item. It's not overly priced. It's not readily available in the high street. And I just happen to be getting a dirt cheap from a big distributor and I buy it by the pallet load and it bangs out the door and I only make about 50p an item on it, but I put 50 to a box and I'll send in maybe 50 or hundred a week. So if I'm sending in a hundred a week, it's 50 quid profits every week, every month for the last year. And that's what you want consistently slow and steady, but in the race, 
Rome wasn't built in the night, cliche on top of cliche, but they are there for a reason because they are truthful. So hope that answers your question, Claire, and a wee bit of a ramble. Like, yeah. I have just realized it's half seven and I have been prattling away because I am like an excited child at Christmas. Why are you so excited then? Well, honestly, right, I've got Phil now working in the warehouse. Um, it's not the first time I brought somebody on, but I've got a better feeling about this guy simply because he literally, it's the second day and third day in the door, and he's taken to the computer like a duck to water. Um, I think it's going to fit better with his schedule and his life than um, the last guy. At the minute, it's going to be two or three days a week with the uh, potential going full time in another month or so. Um, I'm getting married in a month from today, and I now have to the point where I know in a month's time I can walk out the door. He's going to be there still prepping. And well, now I don't really have to worry about security because I literally have a freaking watch guard there. Um, and yeah, it's like I love the biz of it all. Like, went to stop for lunch. Henry, lorry driver from UPS, rocked up and was like, Right, even let's rock and roll. And I was like, hang on, I'm gonna have enough four boxes to prep here. And he just sat and had the crack while I finished off four boxes, stopped them up, chucked them on a pallet, and just sat and had the crack. And while he was leaving, um Martin, who's my Hermes driver, rocked in and he's like, Where's your camper, Eamon? Because I told him the camper would be back today. And it's great. It's just I built up a network of relationships with guys that um or delivering or collecting from me and I can just sit and have a crack with them all the time and I know I can love it it's far more fun than teaching and it's going to say less stressful but only on occasion but yeah it's great I really should have tidied that shed before I took that photo shouldn't I but you have just lost your audio feed well done you there we go no, you've lost it again. Guys, can anybody let? There we go. You meet yourself. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Welcome to the party. Pick up a seat. Um, yeah, there's an Einstein quote. So like, an empty mind is no. An, yeah, an empty desk is a sign of a, an empty mind. So I suppose you could extend that to a warehouse, couldn't you? An empty vessel makes the most noise. Right. <laughs> right. We know a few of those, <laughs> Anyway, anyways, so yeah, guys, we've got like 19, 18, 19, 20 people watching at the moment. So thank you for joining us. Um, guys, if you want to let us know like where you're watching from and if you have any questions about getting involved in starting wholesale as long as alongside kind of retail arbitrage or online or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, is this still live? Hello. Um, yes, we're still live. So yeah, if you want to drop a few questions. So it's probably worth talking a little bit about what we're doing to help people start get to help people start um, a wholesale business on Amazon. So this is something that Eamon wants to do. Um, this is something that kind of is his project and he's putting his name on it. So yeah, it's um, it's pretty exciting because I mean, from where you've come from, if you think about kind of two years ago, and to kind of the numbers that you're banging out at the moment, it's it's um, it's pretty impressive to be honest, mate. So appreciate yeah. it. Um, so thank you. So what is it? I mean, um, you know, what is it? the concept of what we're going to be doing with the wholesale blueprint, Eamon, and what sort of stage are we at with it? If you'd talk a little bit about that. Repeat your question, because I was sitting reading Kate's comment on the haircut and I got a little bit distracted. Eamon's on a haircut. Uh, yes, yeah, so your project with wholesale, what's the vision for it? What's kind of the concept and where are we with it at the moment? Well. As I'm sure most people in this life know, you and I both work within iGen and we have a couple of different packages we offer. So 
there's a online arbitrage blueprint, which is taking you from day a dot right through to doing any of 20, 30 grand and we'll turn over doing online arbitrage. There's a um, small group and one-to-one -one coaching off the back of that where every second going, hey, I'm getting a good amount of value from that, but I could be doing with just more focused attention and I really want to take this seriously and want to do that. But of late, I've had people mention to me going, hey, I mean, you do wholesale, there's nothing about that in that course. And myself and Luke, we sat down and we talked about it and we're sitting going, if we were starting to bring wholesale content into that course, it's going to confuse a couple of people. It could do more harm than good. Um, but how do we go about this? So I said, right, well, we've got the online arbitrage blueprint. How about a wholesale blueprint? So technically it's not arbitrage, but a wholesale blueprint. Similar sort of setup. We'll take you through from dead dots, how to find suppliers, how to talk to them, how to get those accounts opened, how to prep efficiently, how to make sure you're doing everything due diligence and grow your business from the wholesale model. Um, I know people in America, not as much here, but I know people in America that have went down the wholesale route from day one and never done any arbitrage. Um, similar to people that have went down the road of private label and never done arbitrage. But within the UK marketplace, it seems to be a lot more common that the approach is people will go, my, my initial approach was right, I'm going to do RA for a couple of months, build up a bit of capital, and I'm going to go private label, set up my own brands, you know, McCaffrey Incorporated, you know, and sell combs, bamboo combs and wooden straws, and it's going to be all eco-friendly and it's going to be great. And then the money started rolling in from OA, and I was like, why would I put 10 grand into a gamble that might not work? And wholesale is a safe option. You're buying items you already know. You're buying items from UK suppliers that doesn't take months to arrive. Um, there's no hidden fees where it gets landed at the dock and these import duties or anything like that. Um, shipping costs that have gone through the roof of late aren't a factor. Yes, cost of living's gone up. If you haven't realized that now, wait till you get your next electricity bill. But wholesale just to me was the general progression. And as I said, like, I like rallying around my for my warehouse in a forklift. Um, I had somebody slide into my DMs yesterday going, I hope you've got a license for that. I hope you've got insurance. I hope you've got your lawyers done out for this, that, and the other, or, or you're going to go to jail. And I'm like, right, steady on there, big lads. But it was a fair point. You know, there is there is those considerations to consider. But um, the wholesale for me is just a lot more fun. Like, Buying a dozen packets of like shampoo from Superdrug. Wow, great, cool. Next next week, buy twenty, and we'll see how they go. But when you're sitting, you're phoning up, when you're phoning up a supplier in January, going, "Big lad, that item sold really well over Christmas. Give me a shout when your buyers are putting in the order." And they're coming to you in April or May, going, "Right, Eamon, numbers in the book here. We're ordering pallets of this item. Where are you in this?" And you're trying to project numbers for sales in six months time. It's a wee bit, it's a little bit more fun and exciting. Um, people with this perception, I know I did when I first got the wholesale that you need deep pockets to get started. No, not you don't, all. you don't. My first order was with a UK based, ho sorry, my first wholesale order was with Michael. Do you, did you meet Michael over in England? No, I, know, I, I didn't meet him actually. No. Well, my first order was with Michael. Um, Donald met him at the airport, and like me and Donald were having a conversation. Michael appeared, and Donald was just dust to me because I was just like, oh, "It's Michael." He was my first supplier. Um, ordered the items, got delivered to the house, and the second time I drove to Balamina and collected them in person. And I was for going to Saudi three weeks later. And both he and the person I was there with were like, Eamon, Tate's not for you, Saudi's not for you. I have never seen you get so excited about journals and planners. And I'm like, I couldn't care about the planners. The, the process is what I absolutely buzz over. Um, from that, I then moved on to a supplier in England for different items. Um, and the f my minimum order value with that supplier was 1,500 quid. 
And I struggled on two accounts. A, 1,500 quid was a serious chunk of change for me at that stage. And B, I struggled to find items that I could buy enough of that was going to cover the minimum order value. It took me maybe two weeks building that order. Um, now I can build that order with two isn'ts. Um, but it took me time. I, did I, have this, I didn't have SaaS. I didn't have, Kipo was free at that stage. I didn't have the same level of experience. But it took me time. Um, but it's once once you have a bit of a head on your shoulders, it's really easy to do. I can now phone up a supplier and be like, hey, what more do you have any more of these? I remember during lockdown last year, I was ordering a product from that wholesaler. And I was doing it off my phone. I had a laptop on my knee. I was parked in the ditch on a road just down the road from Stormont, actually, because I had literally just delivered to Stormont. And he phoned me up and he's like, Eamon, you keep ordering this item, but the product could be cited, it's our best seller, and you've never ordered it. And I looked at it and I looked at Amazon and I went, aha, yep, I'll take a pallet load. And when it had arrived, I realized that in my case to be the big shots, it was a mismatch to what was on Amazon. And I was, I can't really turn around and send a pallet load of this back. They'll probably take it, but they'll be like, what are you doing, Eamon? So I was like, you don't really have much options. Um, created a listing, listed the item, and without any PPC, it just started selling organically. There's now four listings for that item, and Amazon mm -hmm. will hammer you to the wall on two of them every day, and the other two, they just behave themselves on it. And I'm like, great, you know you're doing well when you can take a list, an item that's yeah. not on Amazon, list it up, and the biggest competition you have is Amazon themselves. Yeah, fair play, mate. I mean, there's a lot covered there. And I, I would say that there's been a few questions just come through that's interesting to um, kind of address, I suppose. So uh, I, I I would call my business model like hybrid. So in terms of percentages, I don't really know um, what percentage would be wholesale and what it would be OA. I would say a third wholesale at the moment and then the rest, online arbitrage. I was looking at Seller Toolkit earlier. The two out of my three best sellers this year have been from wholesale. Um, so yeah, it's like you can go a lot deeper on products and yeah, build a lot taller. Whereas with OA, if you're, you know, yeah, you build a lot wider, but it just gives you so much, you know, so many more options. And in terms of like, don't need that much money to get started. Um, I would say that like, if people have been doing this for a while and they've maybe reset, so they're limited um, to reset the fat threshold, if that's something that you've taken advantage of, then great. That's probably a good time to start looking at wholesale because I'm a wholesale um, supplier. Um, minimum order quantity is 70 quid and I have a 10K credit account with them so I can order ten thousand pounds and I've got you know a month payment terms on it because I've got a limited company. So yeah, like if you've went limited to reset that because you've been doing this for a while, probably time to take that, you know, progressive step, kind of the logical step into whole stuff. You don't need to stop doing what you're doing, but it just gives you like a kind of a lot more options. Like, you never actually told me the name of a supplier. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I didn't. Um, okay, so let me see here. We have somebody that reminds, asked there's a question. A, there was, that reminds me of a film. There's some film where Forrest Gump, whenever um, Sergeant Dan is sitting at the edge of the, um, the pier, and Sergeant Dan, no, Sergeant Dan's sitting on the edge of the boat and he says the forest, he's in forest number talking and Sergeant Dan says, oh, I never thank you for saving my life. Yeah. And then Boris says, no, you didn't. And then he just jumps and goes for a swim. So, yeah, yeah, I've never told you I can either. <clears throat> Fascinating story. Fascinating yeah. story about there. Told eloquently. Um, Andreas, apologies if I'm saying that wrong, 
Uh, could you give us some tips on how to contact wholesalers? In the words of Jordan Belfort, pick up the phone and start dialing. It really is that, like, I could spend half an hour going through that whole process now, I won't. But I know of people who said, oh, you just send out a mass email, they send you over their wholesale list, you pick out the best items, you place an order. There's people listening, watching this tonight that know fine rightly that I went and spoke to people last week and they said, Amazon sellers, yeah, we don't deal with them. And after a half an hour chat, they were like, listen, we'll set you up an account. And they weren't just saying that they get rid of me because they've arranged to come visit me next week. So they're coming to visit the warehouse, check it out, see what I am, see who I am, and set me up an account. You will not get that from an email. An email, no matter how eloquently written, is too impersonable and blunt. Mm -hmm. Left the phone, if you want to sell, right. I love this stuff. Doesn't bloody sell, which is why I use it, but I used to buy this wholesale and I use it for my hands, great hand cream. So mix a sensitive skin expert um, and there's an advice line. I would start by phoning the advice line or Googling the name of it, Google the company, Find out who the manufacturer is. Phone up the manufacturer, hello, interested in an account, and they're going to say, yeah, sorry, wrong person. Have a chat with them. Who do we need to speak to? What's their name? What office they work in? Find out a bit about them. Gleam as much information as you can. Phone that person. Hi, John. Susan put me through to you. Says you're the man we need to talk to in the whole of the UK if I want to sell a mix of cream. Let's talk. That'll work. Sometimes they just drop the phone, listen, we're not interested. I've had times where they'll be like, yeah, sure, minimum order is a lawyer load per week. What can you do? And I'm like, um, and they're like, right, can't do those numbers. Here's a list of distributors. Start the same conversation again with the distributor. What I will say is Zebu has asked the question up, how many suppliers do I currently have? I'd say at the minute it's roughly around 15. It's been a while since I've done a head count, but I know I've taken on a few more recently. Um, my top five, I try and put an order in every two to three weeks. You don't need hundreds. If you're putting in a three grand order with three or four wholesalers every month, and you're getting five to a th 500 to 1,000 items for that three grand order, and you're doing that if they're low value, obviously if they're higher value, be less items, and you're getting three or four thousand items from them, four or five suppliers, that'll be enough to keep you busy. Yes, obviously you want to grow that on out, but people are under this misconception that you need hundreds of suppliers and buying pallets and pallet loads. That's a dream, but you will want to really clue in workforce to get to that level. You don't need to be at that level overnight, and at that level comes a lot of stress and headaches. Um, yeah, it can be wholesale can be done much lower numbers and stuff than that. There, um, Lloyd, your wholesale, who preps it? So, in terms of prep that I do across the whole business, it's 95% outsourced. So, Fred and Arthur, we prep, they do the majority of my prep. My best supplier is based in Northern Ireland and they don't deliver to the mainland so i would prep that i would prep that myself whether it's myself or i've got a couple of kind of local lads that come around and give me a bit of a hand so yeah you can do both you can send it to a prep center um or if you've got a bit of space yeah you can do that yourself you can like there's cash and carries you can order from and they'll deliver to your house, drop it in the driveway. If you can find decent products, I know bookers and people like that. Well, we don't have bookers over here. It's yeah. Uh, macro. Other cash, macro basically. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, you can do your own prep or you can outsource it from day one as well. So. Tell you, tell you what to do if you like. Go now. I will, that new guy, because I'm still sort of training them up on one and get them experience, and I'd like to give back to all the assistance that you've given me. The next time you've got an order coming in from that local wholesaler, 
I'll send him down and he can help you prep it free of charge. Free of charge, right, okay. And um, just just for the information, I think, you'd be able to I think they, they call go. that in the they call that in the, in the forces a reconnaissance mission. We would never do anything like that. Never do anything like that. No, you'd never come around to my shed and have a look around all the different ASINs that I'm selling and go, oh, that's from Ikea. Oh, that's nice. And then all of a sudden, why is there another seller on that? Why is he? Oh, that's why. So Eamon would never do anything like that. No, it's all good fun, guys. All good fun. So but wasn't it, I'd rather it be Eamon than someone else. Put it that way. And if that's not love, I don't know what it is. So let's see, free prep skid spine, you mean? Yeah. So let's have a look. Fab, thank you so much. I'll give it a go. I thought there was some sort of protocol to follow. Thank you again. So let's just again guys, there's uh, it's a little bit awkward, this system. I'm not sure who said that. I would say, like, if you watch through those videos that I put together, I mean, um, I'm pretty good on the phone. It's what I've done for about 10 years before this. So I know how to speak to people. I kind of know how to recognize what turns people off and what they want to hear. So there's a bit of a science to that um, and how you say things and all the rest of it. But, yeah, um, really, um, it's, a it's a little bit like doing a press-up. You can read all the books and watch all the YouTube videos on doing press-ups and doing sit-ups, but unless you start to do them, then you're never really going to, yeah, uh, get the benefit from them. So I would certainly um, just pick up the phone and just say, yeah, um, just explain, I want to do this, I want to do that. And if you watch through those um that series of videos that we've done. There's a video on kind of building relationships. And I think the first part of building relationship is just doing what you say you're gonna do. So some people are kind of hard to get hold of because they're in meetings and things like that. So a lot of your time will generally be spent speaking to what's known as like a gatekeeper. So yeah. that's the person between, that's the, basically the person between you and the person you want to speak to. And their job is basically to save that person time and save that person energy speaking to the wrong type of people. So you, if someone has been difficult on the phone, it's not anything to do with you, but they're doing their job and kind of doing their due, their due diligence on you. So if you know the right ways to speak to them and know when to call back at a certain time because someone's just coming in for a coffee between meetings and you call at that time that you say you did then that really just builds that kind of integrity with you so yeah um in terms of protocol yeah there's no real protocol but you're speaking business to business rather than customer to business if that makes sense so you're not really speaking as a customer you're trying to build that relationship I see there's a follow-up question there and they're saying about, you know, do you say sell on Amazon or an online store? Kind of how do you word it? Like I did say at the start, I know Andres was a wee bit late in, but I just say I'm a retailer. If they ask if it's bricks or mortar online, if they delve more questions, I will offer up more information. I know you could say it's a live omission, but I don't think that is pertinent to the opening stages of the conversation. I'd be like, listen, I'm currently expanding my product range. Would love to chat to you about your products and what you can offer and what your terms are for opening an account. Um, sell for about four years. Um, what, what's in your products? What's your hot sellers? You know, what is pushing at the moment? And then if that's more information, yeah, great. I spoke to a, a seller the other day at trade show and they're like, yeah, we sell these items. And I was like, I like them because they're related to cycling and at one stage before it became a blimp, I loved cycling, you know, I like sell them, scan them. And he's like, oh, I've seen a couple of other people scanning them and then they walk off and I'm like, well, I'd like to open an account. And it was great because at that stage, um, 
I was moderately dehydrated and I had a acute pain in the cranium region and they offered me a lovely full fat can of coke and I sat and I filled out all my details and it's on my to-do list this week to get an order in with them. And I'm like, boom, great. And he's like, yeah, we'd be over in Northern Ireland every month or so. I'll pop down for a coffee and I'm like, happy days. And it's, he was like, yeah, you sell on Amazon, great. I'll call over and visit you. Awesome. Well, we're, I didn't realize the time. We're kind of I know. nearly an hour. So, right, let's talk a little bit about what we're doing in terms of wholesale blueprint. So we are offering this up to a handful five. Five. five people. Yeah. Basically, Eamon is in a position where he wants to mentor five people from where they are at the moment with their Amazon business to well what sort of level would you say that you could get to some get someone who's maybe been selling on amazon six months have maybe done ten thousand pounds worth of sales something like that they've got kind of an idea of keeper and that type of thing but they want to start at wholesale what would you say that you know who is this who is this blueprint aimed towards in it's in I'm sitting getting private messages here going, hey, lad, you better be including me. And I'm like, yes, dear. Um, my approach with this is, yes, as I mentioned, wholesale blueprint. Still only writing out the course. And what I need is I need five beta testers that I can bounce contents off. And you've seen me. I'll go on an absolute tangent about inviting a sales rep around for a coffee. And what I don't want is to produce a course where it's like, yeah, this one time he came around and his, his car got stuck and I had to go and get a tire and pump it up. Be nonsense. So what I'm looking is five people that are at a point where they've been selling for a couple of months. They've got their head screwed on a bit where it's not going to be, oh, I'm getting that. Oh, I'm getting that. What does this mean? Where they've got a wee bit of cop on about them. That's that's the basics I'm going to say of the criteria, a wee bit of cop on, somebody that I can talk to without beating my head of a wall that can go, I want to know this about wholesale and I'm like, great, I will build that into the course. So it will be small group coaching, it's the first five people, so they're going to be getting a hell of a lot more attention than the sort of average person, the average client would get. If they've got a question, I will not only answer the question, but I'll be building that into the course. So by the time it is fully launched, there is everything in it that needs to be in it rather than everything in it that I like to talk about. Because there is probably fundamentals that I've overlooked because either A, I've been doing it that long, or B, it just, just seemed obvious to me that somebody else would be like, but how do you do that? So I want five people, and I mean five, not 10, not 12, generally five only, that I can be like, right, lads and ladies, need your ideas in this. What do you want from this? What do you want to hear more about? And I will sit and build it out for you. It's going to be a lot more one-on-one -on -one attention. And anybody that's looked at our coaching will realize that that is quite pricey. Um, but for this, you will be getting a lot more of my attention because I will be using your questions and your input to help build this course. Um, what I would say is in return for that, you are going to be getting less than a 50, sorry, more than a 50% discount off the price of the course once it is fully rolled out. I think it's important as well to kind of say that, I mean, both Emma and I were across at the autumn show last week. God, it seems longer than that. And we were buzzing just after it because there's a couple, there was a couple of things that I felt happened. So Emma and I actually only met for the first time. So we're we're about an hour away from each other um, in Ireland here, but and we've been messaging and stuff for a few months, but we'd only met in Birmingham, so we both flew to Birmingham, only met over there. So long story cut short, that was two years ago, and last week, Sunday, we went. Did we go for food? On, no, we didn't go for food on Sunday. We went for food on. We did go for food on Sunday. Well, we were both buzzing after um, one of the, I think it was maybe, well, whatever day it was, we were absolutely buzzing because 
two years ago, if you said Amazon, it was like a bad word. It was like, oh, not interested. Yeah. But what's happened in the last two years, obviously COVID, obviously kind of the high street was, is a, a lot of retailers moving away from the high street mm-hmm. to online anyway. And COVID has certainly accelerated that. So <clears throat> that and the fact that we've kind of been doing this for a couple of years, everyone just seems so much easier to talk to. So I think if you were starting that, I think it would definitely be in your interest to have an insight in terms of kind of the mindset of a supplier, how you speak to them and kind of what works for us, how we speak I, to them. So, I'm going to argue a little bit against that, which I know is counterintuitive, but I was thinking about this because you and me spoke about this and that supplier that I'm talking about, I'm like... This ends up being going to them shows for 20 or 30 years. So I'm bound to have spoke to them in the past and they fogged me off. And I would argue the difference is this year was my approach. Because my first year there, hi, I'm an Amazon seller. I would like an account. And they said, no. Nope. And I went, okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Next. Whereas now I come up, well, how's it going? Like that one seller, I spent 20 minutes sitting talking to him about Irish football. Never mentioned sales. Never mentioned the Amazon thing. Just chanting football, having a crack, talking away, and um, slagging off the fella down into the stall, just having a bit of banter. Like they're there to sell. Like that's the thing, they're the trying to sell to you. But they're also human beings. And like I phoned one of my reps the other day and I was like, you know, Neil didn't see the show. How come you weren't there? And he's like, I've done them for 20 years, you know, they are long, they're tiring. You have to put on the same fake smile. He says stuff that'll leave to the younger lads. And that's it. Like someone, like I spoke to Don, and he said I tried to get an account with them lads, and I couldn't get near them. I rocked up at five to five, where they were completely jaded and done. And I was like, "Lads, what's the story?" And they're like, "Actually, I fair enough." It's all about your approach, and I think it's now because I'm I've been to that many of them. I know the approach a wee bit more than I want an account. What can you do? And they're like, "I can tell you to get stuffed." Um, it's also quite interesting to note that Ofcom or government website have said that a third of all retail this Q4 will be online and a lot of suppliers have realized that even the high street isn't guaranteed so they have to look at other marketplaces so like I spoke to one company that does leather products and they're like no we've an exclusive arrangement with one seller no thanks and I'm like do they sell every one of your products and they're like no if you range out you're not stocking it yet and I was like well could I stock it and they're like I and just like that, I was like, I'll leave his alone. I'll create my own listings under your brand. I'll match his sort of prices and numbers, and it'll just be a continuation. They're like, sure. They're getting more exposure. They're still getting the sales. Because I spoke to them in such a way, I was like, oh, please, I wasn't begging. They're like, fine. Yeah. And they're, so, they're also they're also not putting all their eggs in one basket. That if no. something happens to him or her, sorry, then they're, they're high and dry. You know, there is a benefit to have more than one yeah cool so yeah there's i mean i've obviously seen the proposal what Eamon's put together there's going to be we're talking about trade shows and things like that we will be providing it's not just the course it's not just like one-to-one support there will be meetups there will be what would you say and there's going to be meetups and other aspects that you just won't get anywhere else so i'm actually really excited to see how it develops because those first five people really um it's a massive opportunity because we will obviously open it out to you know however many people we can serve and however you know comfortably and still deliver in quality so we will open this out but the first five people you're basically getting in just before q4 um you're getting in basically one-to-one coaching which at the sort of price that we're talking about quarter it's a bit yeah it's uh it's a bit of a no-brainer so if you are interested in that um drop a wholesale hashtag wholesale or you can drop a either myself or preferably Eamon at the end to say, I'm interested in getting involved. And even if you 
you know, want to get involved, just have a phone call, see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, and I would say the other thing as well, um, like we said at the start, don't need tens of thousands of pounds no. to, to do this at all. My um, first wholesale order is 1500 quid and I genuinely struggled to reach that value. I didn't have, I had maybe two or 3000 in the bank and I was like putting all my eggs in my basket for it and it paid off. Um, like one of the things- There's a message, There's a message for you there, Edmund, if you want to cover that. I will. Um, da -da -da -da. So what I will say is one of the things that I do want to include in the course is a list of wholesalers and a list of items that can be bought wholesale. Now, I don't want to be sort of accused of mis-selling, so it's not going to be like, hey, this wholesaler selling these 10 items, go and buy them. Um, but what I would say is that I will be so unpicked. This is an item that you can... Da -da 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 -da. Wow. Um, I've just got a really lovely DM and I'd like to publicly say thank you to somebody that doesn't want to be acknowledged. Um, yeah, so it is going to have lists of wholesalers. So a lot of donkey work done for you. So my team members have built out a list of suppliers and the contact details. So rather than you try and go and find it all out, we've all that done. We have went into the top 10 categories within the Amazon marketplace. So we've went into grocery, we've went into baby, and we've picked out examples of, this is an item that can be bought wholesale. Yes, I don't know who the supplier is, but you can tell by these key metrics that it's a wholesale item, which means if these suppliers, if these sellers can find it, you can too. We then go down looking at templates of how to send follow-up emails, templates of phone calls, um, and then McCaffrey, proprietary, might trademark this before I give it out, um, wholesale software. So it's, it's not fancy, it's not, wow, you know, login details and all that there, but it is the Google Sheets that I use to build out my wholesale orders. So I have Google Sheets for supplier one, and I'll go in and there'll be 100 ASINs on it. And what my wholesale VL will go through, they'll go down through that and say, right, still get stock, still get stock, out of stock in these five here, highlight them, go in through, go into business reports, right, we sold 30 of them in the last month and we're sold out. We'll order 40 of them this month, do it that way. So we could have a wholesale order of three or four grand built out in a while of an afternoon from one of my team members before I even look at it. Build all that out. So that will be included in it too. Show you how to build that out, show you how the calculations work. Like I put up a screenshot yesterday of what was it, eight or 10 grand order and projected profits, turnover and all this here. And people are like, well, how do you know it's going to be a turnover? You know, prices change. Yes, prices change, whatever turns, it's projected turnover, it's not guaranteed. But you're able to calculate all that out. So if you're sitting going, right, this should take six weeks to sell, we're going to have five grand profit, which means if you're starting with 10,000 now, six weeks you're going to have 15, what way that can project out over the year. And um, we could through a lot of that sort of stuff to help work with your cash flow. Um, with wholesale as well, slow and steady wins the race, but it's all a numbers game. So you can be a lot more competitive in price, which means you can try and turn your stuff. That's the one. So yeah, 17.5% 17, 17 margin, 46.5% ROI. That is conservative numbers because of one of those items I took turnover. My VA had the turnover in at current rates and it was a pallet of an item that's currently selling at 9.99 so it's 240 units and my target price for sales will be 12.99 um so there is an extra three pound on 240 units so 240 times 12 you're looking at 750 to another 800 quid turnover in that so plus off that three pound, you shouldn't expect an you know, 1.50 profit. So 150 times 240 is going to be 140 quid, which should bring your profit up. If anybody wants to run them numbers and correct me, have fun. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, guys, I absolutely love wholesale. I'll come on calls and sit and chat away and different stuff, but I genuinely buzz off this stuff. It's fun. 
I'm not really that, but it is the quick, is quickest way of scale. It is a brilliant way of scale. There might be quicker ways. I don't know. I haven't done everything, but in fact, you can like that item I ordered today. Haven't it ordered yet? Mm -hmm. But the guy said, "Oh, you know, we might be able to talk to you in price." I was like, "There are items that you usually sell singles because they're hundred quid item." And I was like, "I'll take five or six of them." And they're like, "Yeah, we 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 can improve our price." You're not getting that from boots or shipper drug. You phone Smiths and you're like, "Hey, I'd like to order six of these," and they're like, "Cool, we're going to close your account." <laughs> Whereas I now have Smiths main supplier, and they'll give me a buy a pallet load, which is great because my father says I'm not allowed to go back to Nuria and rub it in the guy's face. He says it's poor form, it's on, it's non unprofessional, and it could cause me drama. But I really want to go back and rub it in his face. Oh. I can't Zibu, go back there either without any, uh, without any consolation. Zebu, um, I would love to work with you. Um, oh, I know that, 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 that is Zebu, and I know that oh, the questions yeah. that he will put to me, it would be golden. Um, I'm happy to have you on board, sir. Being in Germany, being in the UK, doesn't make a button the difference. It's all the same. Um, is it going to be valid tax implications? It depends if you're going to be doing it in the UK or German marketplace. I know you're fully in the German marketplace. Um, I might not be able to give you as many leads or suppliers because I don't know all the German suppliers, but I do know that at the end of the autumn for, because I kind of went up to a stall on Tuesday evening and goes, listen, I know it's not Wednesday, but I've been looking at this bag. I meant to buy it last year. Can about off you know cash considering you know you're going to be dropping down the stall and they're like no no can't do this is all getting packed up and we're going to germany most of the stalls that leave the autumn fire pack up their stuff and i can't remember the what is your big one in munich for a full week and they all jump over that so um that was why he wouldn't sell me because i have bought stuff at the autumn fire before we were like they're packing up a stall i'm like i'll give you 20 quid for that particularly Chinese wholesalers who really don't want to log out in a plane. Come on with bags and trinkets. Cool. So, and I'm just looking through, if there's any more questions, guys, it's got 13 people watching. So awesome. Thanks guys for tuning in. If you've got any more questions, drop them. If you want to get involved, yeah, put a hashtag wholesale or um, PM. DM, Eamon, slide into yes, the please. DMs. Um, it makes him smile when he gets a nice message. So let's have a look. How many good wholesalers do you have at the moment? Ooh, Every wholesaler is a good wholesaler. It's your relationship that needs work. <laughs> that is not true. I have wholesalers that are completely useless. Um, I had a call probably a year ago now great guy was on the phone to him an hour gave me access to the website talked through looked at it checked it and at the end of the hour i goes listen thanks for your time but i don't think i'll ever be placing an order with you and he's like why not and i was like there's just no market for your products at the moment um a lot of it was catering level food so three kilos jar of jam and stuff like this here and he was like, yeah, fair enough, understand that. In that case, you want to talk to Cunningham's down the road. They're more what you're after. And I'm like, thanks. Yeah. So it wasn't a fit. It wasn't going to work for either of us. There's no point wasting time saying I'll an order with you next week. But it still led on something better. Yeah. That's, yeah, like there was a thing I mentioned it last week, and I just can't get over it. But yeah, there was a certain item I was looking for went around all the stalls that were like that where that would be spoke to someone it's like do you guys stock this item but just don't have it here he's like no we don't do it but have you have you heard of m mccaffrey limited and i was like no he's like yeah they're like the biggest uk supplier took his business card he said tell john smith i've given you this number so number email address it was like thank you and yeah just awesome if that's what it, and that's what it's all about so don't get that with oa or ra um so yeah if you're 
in any way kind of you enjoy speaking to people you don't enjoy kind of building that relationship and having the crack and all the rest of it then yeah drop a dm and if you want to be like one of the first five or even be considered for like the next round then yeah get on the waiting list and yeah it's um you know in, in a few months time we will be in the middle of q4 you could have your first kind of wholesale um orders hitting fba and just flying it's completely different when you wake up to basically what you were used to doing in a day during q4 because you've got a wholesale supplier that yeah, can provide those items up in bulk and at mass so yeah if that sounds appealing then yeah get involved and if it's for you great if not at least you know a little bit more about what's available anything else Eamon, that you'd add before we wrap this up or i want to i want to tell a story because it's one of my best achievements from last week i spoke to a company and they were completely unassuming they had literally bought a one and a half meter by one meter stall they had their sign on a back wall and they had a ipad and a macbook on a stand and that was it and it just happened to see the image of an item and mm -hmm. i was selling similar items spoke to them got their card thanks very much um and i was like so what's your criteria and like minimum order is 10 grand and i'm like cool can match that any other criteria and then they're like yeah um has to be a minimum of a pallet per item and i was like that's a wee bit steeper because you know volume of sales and we're like yeah sure listen here's a card give us a chat anyway and a day or two later i was back and was one item I was looking to replan off and i'm back and goes do you have this item i was buying it from a wholesaler and said the one in the uk but they, they don't have any at the minute and i laughed and he goes yeah and they won't have we have all the stock in europe I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, we bought all the stock that is now being discontinued and we have all the stock in Europe. Anywhere you're buying it from has bought it from us. And I was like, right, well, in that case, I will be able to put 10 grand in that one item. Um, let's talk. And he goes, where would you like it delivered to Northern Ireland? And I'm like, that'd be kind of nice, yeah. And he's like, oh, well, in that case, minimum order is going to be a full oil load, so 33 euro pallets. And I was like, ah, lads, these are killing me here. By the end of the day, I had it arranged that the supplier who I said I got my first order from ever is also an account, has an account with them. And they've agreed that the next time they're putting in an order, I can piggyback my order off the back of theirs and they'll ship it over to me for just the price of the pallet. So I have circumnavigated a 10 grand minimum order and minimum 33 pallets where they're just like, throw it to our warehouse, we'll throw it over to you, no sweat. Because I have that relationship. That is not going to be on any buy now or a or OA website. That is not going to be something that you're going to get information like that on a Facebook group because people aren't doing that. Like every time I see somebody doing, if I see a group of people doing something on Facebook, I want to be doing the opposite because I don't know. You're not going to stand out by doing the same as everybody else. Yeah. What does it say when everyone else zigs? Zag. So cool. Yeah. So there's a few people interested. Awesome. I want to build on Spanish Amazon as I plan to move to Portugal in the next few years. That's something that's a great um, cool. goal to aim towards. Yeah. Calvo's looking to get involved in wholesale as well. So good man yourself. Yeah, and if there's no more questions, we'll wrap it up now. Um, guys, if that's been useful, then great. Anyone that's watching on replay or YouTube, we'll reach out to you guys as well. So there's nothing else from me, um, apart from a little bit of housekeeping. Um, next week, it's going to be interesting. Um, we're going to have someone on... Oh, you about to cut across me? What are you about to say, Emma? No, I was going to ask, why is it interesting? Have I not been paying attention? What have I missed? Do tell. <laughs> you've, been, you've been very interesting. Um, no, um, yeah, it's going to be something kind of different, but it's going to be 
something that um, will lend itself to wholesale as well. So someone that's developed a little bit of software that helps with things and there'll be some live training on it as well. So that'll be interesting. And yeah, I'm looking forward to that because it's not something we've done before. And yeah, hopefully it's, um, it's going to be beneficial. So yeah, that's next week. Looking forward to that. Same time next week, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Anything else from you, Mr. McCaffrey? Um, no, just that, you know, I'm anxious to get going on this. Um, one month to today, I am a condemned man. I mean, it'll be the happiest day of my life. Um, so I've had Liam bend in my ear earlier going, McCaffrey, you're far too much on. And I'm sitting going, I know, but like when we first announced this, Luke was like, right, write me out a plan of what you're going to do. And I sort of misheard him. So I wrote out a plan for the whole course. So I'm like, I've got it sitting here. And I'm like, I just want to get it done. Like, if anybody knows me, they know that I'm rather straight talking. There's no sort of nonsense or bullshit with me. I'll tell it exactly as it is. And for anybody that have helped so far within the IGN community, I'd like to think that I've added value to you. Um, Luke said on the last call we did together that the reason I had to stop doing sales was people come on a sales call and I'm like, you don't need to buy a course. Do this, this, and phone John down the road and he'll sort of find that you done. And Luke is like, human. So for the first side to sign up, I will personally guarantee that you will more than double your money and investment within four six months. I'm that cocky on it. And that is not written anywhere, but I'm saying it live on a recorded call. First five to sign up, guarantee they buy in in the first six months. Boom. Boom. Can't be further than that. Cool. Well, that's awesome. And um, yeah, certainly. I think those five spots are pretty much going to go by the end of this week. So if you want to get involved, drop us a DM. Um, like there will be people who can't watch this for whatever reason, um, watching the replay. So yeah, um, it will be, it is literally going to be for five people just so we can focus on that, deliver and yeah, um, make sure they have a yeah really good experience. So what what I will say, I'm going to cut across you for a moment, Lloyd. Um, Liam, who has been in the comments there, for some of the people, I might just get him to reach out to you first, just to sort of figure it out. And um, within the Q4 coaching that I'm doing this week, I think I have six calls back to back on Friday. So that's my Friday wiped out. And tomorrow I have already personal commitments and then extra calls that I move for people as sort of a compliment to them and from my own faux pas from double booking tonight. So between now and sort of Saturday morning, I am rather to the wire on it. So I might just get Liam to reach out first to any of those people and then I'll happily pick up the chat. Um, just in case you're wondering why Liam's sliding into your DMs when you message me. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah, I think um, we'll wrap that up now. So a few more people put a few hashtags all in so yeah let's get involved let's get this let's get this moving so guys if there's anything else send well liam or Eamon or myself DM and we'll get you sort of happy. go on then no 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 okay this so one I this think... one's okay well in interests of i don't know what the right word is um in the interests of youtube youtube violations and all that type of stuff we'll keep it clean and um yeah guys i hope that's been useful and if you want to get involved accept message cheers one guys. cherry bye bye Thank